Functions, stretch versus shrink, or compression, what are they? Functions are a relation from a set of inputs to a set of outputs where each input maps to exactly one output. Why? Helps to collect light energy for solar power more efficiently. Interesting fact, toads are usually nocturnal. They burrow beneath the earth in the day and come out at night to feed on insects. Now, let's talk about how placing the numbers in different positions affects the graph. Before we talk about stretch versus shrink, let's talk about the shifts. We have two types, vertical and horizontal. With vertical shift, we have a constant, which affects the output. So the y value either goes up or down, depending if the constant is being added or subtracted. That leaves us with horizontal shift. With horizontal shift, we have a constant, which affects the input. So the x value either goes to the left or to the right, depending if the constant is being added or subtracted. And those are the four shifts we could have. Now, let's talk about stretch versus shrink. We have two types, vertical and horizontal. With vertical stretch and shrink, we have a coefficient which affects the output. So the y value increases or decreases depending if the coefficient is greater than one or between zero and one. When is it a vertical stretch? When is it a vertical shrink? Let's take a quick think. What do you think happens if we multiply our result by a number greater than 1? The absolute value of our result will increase or get higher, so we will have a vertical stretch. If we multiply our result by a number between 0 and 1, what do you think happens? The absolute value of our result will decrease or get lower. That leaves us with horizontal stretch and shrink. With horizontal stretch and shrink, we have a coefficient which affects the input. So the x value increases or decreases depending if the coefficient is greater than 1 or between 0 and 1. When is it a horizontal stretch? When is it a horizontal shrink? Let's take a quick think. If we multiply our input by any number greater than 1, what do you think happens? The absolute value of our result will increase or get higher. Now, what does that mean with our output? That means we will reach the outputs faster, so we will have a horizontal shrink. If we multiply our input by any number between 0 and 1, what do you think happens? The absolute value of our result will decrease or get lower. Now, what does that mean with our output? That means we will reach the outputs lower, so we will have a horizontal stretch. And those are the four stretches and shrinks we could have. One way I remember which one is which is the value of the number in vertical stretches and shrinks is opposite to horizontal stretches and shrinks. One last scenario before we look at the examples is reflection. That is why I said the absolute value of our result. Dealing with negative numbers is tricky. If the negative is outside the function, the output is changed and is reflected across the x-axis because the y value has flipped from positive to negative or vice versa. If the negative is inside the function, the input is changed and is reflected across the y-axis because the x-value has flipped from positive to negative or vice versa. Now, let's take a look at the examples we're going to discuss in today's video. Let's take a closer look at example one. Let's read the steps. Step one, graph original. Step two, graph each step. Step three, check each step. Now let's read the question. Graph each step of the function where we start with f of x is equal to x squared and has the following characteristics. A horizontal shrink by a factor of two a vertical shrink by a factor of 8, and translates 1 down. First, let's write down f of x is equal to x squared, since that is the original function. Now, let's graph f of x is equal to x squared. Now, let's write down the next step. f of x is equal to the quantity of 2x squared. What do you think is going to happen? Is the graph of f of x is equal to the quantity of 2x squared going to push in horizontally or push out horizontally. Remember, since the 2 affects the input, the result will happen faster. 
So the graph is going to push in horizontally or shrink in horizontally. Let's check the points 2, 4, and 1, 4 to see what happens mathematically. If we divide the input of the second step by the first step, or 1 by 2, the result is 1 half. The result is the reciprocal of the number in the parentheses. That is because the 2 shrinks the input so it is 1 half times faster to reach the same output and f of x is equal to the quantity of 2x squared. Now let's move on to the next step by writing down f of x is equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 2x squared. Whoa, why is it 1 eighth and not 8? Let's bring back the vertical shrink diagram. It says on the bottom a vertical shrink by a factor of 1 over c. And c is 1 eighth. So let's substitute 1 eighth for c and simplify. So 1 over c becomes 1 over 1 eighth, which becomes 1 times 8 over 1, which becomes 8. That is why our c value is 1 eighth and not 8. When we push the graph downward or outward, we have to flip the factor. Now, let's graph f of x is equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 2x squared. What do you think is going to happen? Is the graph of f of x is equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 2x squared going to push up vertically or push down vertically? Remember, the 1 eighth affects the output. The results will happen slower. So the graph is going to push down vertically or shrink vertically. Let's check the points 1, 4 and 1, 0 0.5 to see what happens mathematically. If we divide the outputs of the third step by the second step, or 0 0.5 by 4, the result is 1 eighth, which is the number outside the parentheses. So the output happens slower and f of x is equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 2x squared. Now let's move on to the last step by writing down f of x is equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 2x squared minus 1. What do you think is going to happen? Is the graph of f of x is equal to 1 eighth times the quantity of 2x squared minus 1 going to translate 1 up or 1 down? Since the constant is negative, our graph moves down 1. Let's check the points 0, negative 1 and 0, 0 to see what happens mathematically. If we subtract the fourth step and the third step for negative 1 and 0, the result is negative 1, which is what we want. That is example 1. Now let's move on to example 2. Let's read the question. Graph each step of the function where we start with f of x is equal to the square root of 3 and has the following characteristics. A horizontal stretch by a factor of 6, a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, and is reflected over the x-axis. First, let's write down f of x is equal to the square root of x, since that is the original function. Now, let's graph f of x is equal to the square root of x. Now, let's write down the next step, f of x is equal to the square root of 1 6 x. Whoa, why is it 1 6 and not 6? Let's bring back the horizontal stretch diagram. It says on the bottom, a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over c. And c is 1 6. So let's substitute 1 6 for c and simplify. So 1 over c becomes 1 over 1 6, which becomes 1 times 6 over 1, which becomes 6. That is why our c value is 1 6 and not 6. When we push the graph downward or outward, we have to flip the factor. Now let's graph f of x is equal to the square root of 1 6 x. What do you think is going to happen? Is the graph of f of x is equal to the square root of 1 6 x going to push in horizontally or push out horizontally? Remember, since the 1 6 affects the input, the result will happen slower. So the graph is going to push out or stretch horizontally. Let's check the points 1 1 and 6 1 to see what happens mathematically. If we divide the inputs of the second step by the first step, or 6 by 1, the result is 6. The result is the reciprocal of the number underneath the square root. That is because the 1 6 stretches the input, so it is 6 times slower to reach the same output, and f of x is equal to the square root of 1 6 x. 
Now, let's move on to the next step by writing down f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of 1 6 x. What do you think is going to happen? Is the graph of f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of 1 6 x going to push up vertically or push down vertically? Remember, the 3 affects the output. The results will happen faster. So the graph is going to push up vertically or stretch vertically. Let's check the points 6, 1 and 6, 3 to see what happens mathematically. If we divide the outputs of the third step by the second step, or 3 by 1, the result is 3. The result is the same number outside the square root. So the output happens faster when f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of 1, 6, x. Now, let's move on to the next step by writing down f of x is equal to negative 3 times the square root of 1, 6, x. What do you think is going to happen? Is the graph of f of x is equal to negative 3 times the square root of 1, 6, x going to reflect downward or to the left? Remember, the negative outside the square root affects the output, so the graph is going to reflect downward or across the x-axis. Let's check the points 6, 3 and 6, negative 3 to see what happens mathematically. If we look at the outputs, one is positive and one is negative. And if we take the absolute value of both outputs, the result will be 3, which is what happens when you reflect across the x-axis. That is example 2. Now it is your turn to go ahead and pause the video here. You can take your time to answer this question, and I'll show you the results in 3, 2, and 1. Did you get it correct? Fantastic. If not, there's always tomorrow.